The only way that God sets us free from certain things is he has to take them away. Here's the thing I found out. I found out that it really doesn't matter who causes it. If it's from God or if it's not from God, and, and I don't really know the difference sometimes. What I know is that through God, through, through it, it's kind of like his hands, whatever happens in our lives, it has to pass through his hands. So whether it came from his hand or whether it was from the enemy is not the most consequential thing. The most consequential thing is, will I partner with what God is doing even if it's not what I prefer? Or will I resist it? Or will I push against it? Or will I go with it? And so the Israelites are being set free from Pharaoh, and just about the time that freedom is in sight, just about the time that it looks like they're going to make it to this land flowing with milk and honey. To, but, but listen to what happened when they got there. Pharaoh changed his mind and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots. The enemy uses the heaviest artillery on the people who are carrying the greatest purpose. And so if a lot is coming against you, that means God has put a lot in you. And one of the things that God is showing us in this season is what he put in us. And you know how he's doing that? By shutting down everything around us. Because sometimes the only way for you to see what is within you is that everything that is not within you… I put it like this. When I preach to a crowd, I sometimes get carried by their energy. But when I'm preaching and there's only three people in the room, something different has to kick in. And so we think a lot of the time, sometimes the Lord allows something around us to shut down, to die, so that something within us can come alive. And Pharaoh said, I, I changed my mind about letting them go. You don't really realize life lessons until later. You know that, right? It's later that you say, oh, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Because this taught me that. And it's later that we see the lessons. And now we can read about Exodus 14, you know, the children of Israel. Wow, they should have trusted God through the Red Sea and God was going to make a way. But it's easy to say that on the other side of it. It's so easy to look back and say, well, you know, he made a way where there was no way. But, you know, that's when you're looking back. What really takes faith is to look forward at something and to believe that he's going to make a way. When you can't see it, a lesson in letting go. And God told Moses from the beginning that freedom is not going to come easy. Certain freedoms in our life have to be forced. That sounds bad, right? But it's true. The only way that God sets us free from certain things is He has to take them away. And sometimes what God allows to be removed from our life is just as important as what he allows to be brought into our life. And yet this is a season where a lot of us are having to learn to appreciate things. And so I've been thinking a little bit about the fact that a lot of times in my life, the lesson God is teaching me is to appreciate something. What is God teaching you to appreciate in this season? Very simple, but maybe worth some reflection. Honestly, I had really gotten so caught up in what I didn't like about my job that I forgot the fact that having one is a blessing that I can't take for granted. Sometimes the only way that God gets us to appreciate something is to allow it to leave for a little while. That doesn't mean that this global pandemic is a plague sent by God, but I think God can use it to teach us to appreciate some things, don't you? But you know what? The very same thing that we long for today is something that we have been living in for so long that God is teaching me to appreciate some things. He's teaching me to appreciate some things that I had become so accustomed to. 
accustomed to, used to. You get used to the things that God gives you to the point that you can become used to the people that God gives you. You can get used to simple moments, things that used to be annoying you learn to appreciate, don't you? Isn't it interesting how the children of Israel, all they wanted to do was get out of Egypt, get out of Egypt, get out of Egypt, but when they went through the Red Sea into the wilderness, they wanted the food that they had in Egypt. It took leaving Egypt to really appreciate it. And now God was trying to bring them out of it, but there are some things that, that we need to appreciate, and we can only appreciate them in seasons sometimes where we don't quite have them in the same form anymore. Does that make sense? Because God is teaching me to appreciate some things. He's revealing things to me that I did not appreciate enough, like things I just took for granted, things I just thought would always be this way. And so one of the things that's happening in this season for all of us is God is not only teaching us to appreciate certain blessings, but he is resetting the baseline of what we consider a blessing. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So that's the new baseline for being grateful. Before God gives us a new blessing, he wants to give us a new baseline. Did you just breathe? Praise him. Are you still here? Praise him. Did he wake you up? Praise him. Did he sustain you? You might not like the taste of manna, but if you've got something to eat, praise him. You might not like who you're sitting next to on the couch, but praise him that you got somebody to sit next to. Grab that hand and squeeze it and say, if you've got a pulse, praise him. If you've got breath, if he gave you another day, why am I screaming there's nobody in the room? My new baseline to praise him is just, thank you for keeping me alive. You're all over me. You kept me in my right mind. I should be going crazy, but you did it anyway. In view of God's mercy, offer your body as a living sacrifice. I start with the fact that he kept me another day. I start with the fact that he did not owe me real estate today. I start with the fact that the boundary lines have fallen in pleasant places for me. He is my portion. He is my strength. He is my rock, and the storm can come, but it can't knock my house down. A new baseline for praise. And then he's not only teaching me to appreciate some things, and he's not only resetting some things, but he's teaching me to release some things. Uh huh. If you are a control freak and you want to stay that way, log off right now. God is teaching me some things about release. Um, I had this flashback the other day. From when, I guess about three years ago, my elbow started hurting all the time, and Chunk said that's called golfer's elbow. Now, he used to be a physical therapist, so I'm like, I know you went to school for this crap, but I've never played golf. So you're going to have to explain to me how I got golfer's elbow. And I told him that my elbow was hurting because I had been lifting too heavy. But he said, actually, it's not the amount of weight that caused the injury. It's not how much weight you were lifting. It's how hard you were gripping it. I'm coming for the control freaks. I'm coming for the people who, even when you pray for your kids, you're not really praying. You're just giving God a punch list of ways to make them not in his image, but yours. I'm coming for everybody who had a plan for this first part of the year and now you, you can't really find your, your rhythm, you can't find your groove, and it's understandable, and it's completely normal. But what Chunks told me, this is so powerful, you could lift a lot more if you will loosen your grip. You can lift a lot more. How much time do y'all have today? God said, if you'll hold it differently, you can handle it. So, so, so here's what I'm noticing. If I take it day by day or hour by hour or moment by moment, I'm good. It's only when I get too far out or too far back. Either one is a mistake. 
I can handle Sunday on Sunday, but I can't handle Saturday on Sunday, and I can't handle Monday on Sunday. But this is the day that the Lord has made, forgetting what is behind. I can't fix that. I got a grip on something behind me, and I can't go toward what God has put in front of me. But I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. God said you can get there if you let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Oh, man, that preach is so good. Why is it so hard to do? Let go and let God. Uh Uh-huh. You going to pay my light bill? No, but let go and let God. I, I don't think it's really about letting go of your responsibilities. What I think it's about releasing is the things you could never control to begin with. And all God is doing is showing us how little control we had to begin with. 